This is David Brown. He is the founder of Soyuz Microphones and this little guy, which is the Tula Microphone. And David Brown sent me a note regarding my first Tula Mic review. Yeah, I am dying to show it to you. Actually, dying might be a thing because uh, they're made in Russia and Russia has that thing with the News from the booth! Hey villagers, welcome back to the VoiceOver Village. I'm Rick McIver, the village idiot and holder of email secrets. Instead of rehashing what I did for the first Tula review video, I'm just going to put a link to that video right up there. So if you haven't seen it yet, go check it out. It's a good video. It covers a lot of different topics. Let's move on. As a reminder, there are chapter markers in the description. So if you want to jump around, feel free, go jump to your heart's content. I've been using this fantastic little mic for about six months now, and my affection for it has only grown. It is so versatile. I just love it. And, and, and David friggin' Brown commented on my video. Awesome. All right, let me show you. But before I do, I wanted to let you know that there's a little section that's blurred out on purpose because I'm sensitive to being sensitive to their not wanting to disclose some st or complain because... I'm just going to stop talking because that's that's probably best. Now, as we go through this email, we're going to actually test some of the things he says. So what does he say? Thanks so much for the awesome videos. You're welcome. I just want to cover a couple of points that you brought up. One, we're so sorry about that terrible rattling sound. You're right. It's the cardioid capsule that occasionally can slip out of its rubber boot. We've already addressed the issue at the factory. Cool. So glad I could be helpful. Number two. You should be able to use any USB cable with the Tula. The one that we ship is in no way special. Hmm, that wasn't my experience the first time, but maybe I had a bad cable, so I went and I got more. Let's test it. All right, so I am recording right now using the USB cable that came with the microphone directly into the computer there. And you can see with this, with my phone camera, that the when I talk, the green light flashes, the red power light is on, everything is happy and good. So this first test cable, this is a Logitech cable, USB-A to USB-C. I'm gonna plug it into the back of the tool here and see if it works. So even though the power is on the side here, uh, the power on the front is not on, indicating that the mic is not active. So let's plug in. I actually have to turn on QuickTime and new movie recording to see if it actively came on. I have to select the Tula. So as you can see, the Tula is not an option. Hmm. Wow, this is a little meta. Weird, man. So here's another weird thing that I noticed. When I do use the Logitech cable, the green charging light comes on in the back. But even though the power is on on the side, there are no active lights here. I don't have a drop-down selection to select this microphone as an input source. I'm gonna try turning it off and then turning it back on again, cause you know, things. So after I turned it off and then turned it back on again, the Tula microphone is an option to select. It's active and it's recording. Cable number one works, but you have to power down the microphone and then re let it power back up before it actually comes up as an option. And there you go. This is the third cable that I've tried. It seems to be working just fine, but you have to finagle it a little bit. Number three, you can use the Tula with the iPad Pros without a camera connector as it's a USB-C. I don't have an iPad Pro, so I'm just going to take your word for it. We are constantly making improvements on the Tula's firmware, so it's a good idea to visit our website and update it from time to time. If you register, we'll send you the latest versions as they appear. Yes, please. Let's go do that right now. Uh, here it is. TulaMikes.com. That's what it is. Boom. Firmware 2.5 is ready. Interview mode. Analog mode. Monitor choice. I'm so excited. You can record the lavalier and the microphone at the same time. Analog mode lets you record from the headphone jack. This monitor thing allows you to turn off the monitoring while you're on a Zoom call or something like that so you don't have to listen to yourself. Back to the email. To get the best results from the Brusfi noise reduction, it's important not to speak at all when long pressing the NC button. That will allow the algorithm to learn the background noise. 
Oh, that makes sense. Let's try it. All right, to test the noise reduction, I'm going to have to unplug this from the video and just use the onboard recorder to turn on the noise reduction. So for testing purposes, I'm going to need a really annoying source of sound. No. How about just the HVAC in my office? I'll turn it on. The furnace is on now, full blast. I'm going to unplug the microphone here and use the internal noise reduction and we'll see how it goes. Okay. This is the camera microphone. I'm sorry, but I want to do this whole thing on camera so you see how it works. It sounds awful, I know, but hold on. But on the other side, that's where the noise cancellation button is down there. So power is on. I'm going to record just normally, no noise cancellation. All right. I've got a green light on the front. That means my levels sound good. This is what this mic sounds like without any noise cancellation with the heater on in the room. Long hold, don't talk, it says. The noise cancellation light came on. Now, one of the things I really did like about this microphone originally was that when you record with noise cancellation on, it actually records two files one without the noise cancellation and one with the noise cancellation. So actually I can bounce back and forth between the noise cancellation and not, just like I'm doing now. Here's with the noise cancellation off and here's with the noise cancellation on. Hopefully you can hear a difference. Back to the email. And lastly, the Tula will shut itself off after six minutes of not being used so there's no danger of the battery being drained. Oh, so it's a feature, not a bug. Let's test it. Again, thanks so much for the wonderful video. You're welcome. And we hope you enjoy using your Tula mic. I do. I do a lot. Okay, so the next thing about this microphone is that it's built like a tiny little tank. And that has saved it from my butter fingers. It has all metal construction and it's been through the ringer. Let me show you what I mean. Please. Okay, open the door. Wait, let me <gasps> open the door. Oh my gosh. Just, oh my just gosh. open the door. Just open the door. Look who's in there. Look who's in there. <gasps> who's in it's there? Tight. Wait! <laughs> <laughs> she forgot she was Mike. Still works really well. Not only that, but look at this. So this is my new microphone wall. You like my microphone wall? I like my microphone wall. Anyway, I was hooking up the different microphones. It's time to hook the Tula up. It goes up here. The problem was when I was screwing it in, I dropped it. Oops. And it fell four feet, hit the table, then bounced off the table and went and hit the concrete basement floor. But it still works. Yay, Tula. So I'm not advocating for dropping your mic in any scenario at any time. However, all I am saying is that this is a tough little bugger. On to the testing phase. So let's get to the sound test. I'll make sure that they're level balanced. <coughs> George Whittem. <coughs> so that they all sound the same. This is the Tula mic. You've been hearing it for the whole video. This is what it sounds like, but let's cut over to this new mic. So first up is the AKG Aura. I tested this microphone a while back. I kind of like the sound, but the handling noise on it is ridiculous, which is why I'm not touching it. Um, something to note is that this microphone does not have a gain adjust on it. So I'll have to do that kind of stuff in post-production. But this will give you an idea of what the AKG sounds like. Now back to the Tula. And now we're back to the Tula mic. Kind of a palate cleanser, if you will. Maybe an ear cleaner. Don't use Q-tips. That's bad. Let's check out the second mic. Next up is the Neat Microphone's new Bumblebee 2. This one does have a little gain adjust on it, so I set them so they match the Tula as best as I possibly could. I like this microphone. I recently reviewed it in the whole new uh, neat microphone series, the King Bee, the uh, Worker Bee, and this is the Bumblebee. Um, as USB microphones go, 
this one was pretty good. So here's how this sounds, and now we go back to the Tula. And here we are back on the Tula mic. One thing I haven't yet been able to confirm is whether or not they designed this mic to be the same size as a pack of cigarettes. So David Brown, if you're watching, can you tell me? Hmm? Let's go to mic number three. Okay, the third microphone to test the uh, Tula against is the Rode Mini. This is a fun little microphone not just because of the mic, but because of all the software that comes with it. It does have a gain adjust. I set it so that it's as close as I can get it to the original Tula. However, um, I'm not using the software uh, to accentuate the microphone. Um, the software that comes with the Mini allows you to add bass have some, or have some roll off, have a mid boost. It allows you a lot of options. This is the flat sound straight out of the microphone and into QuickTime. Hmm. Let's go back to the Tula. All right, that was our third mic, and we're back to the Tula mic here, and still the same mic, still the same settings. Everything is nice and level. Let's look at mic number four. So last on our list, and possibly least, is the Yeti Nano. This is a ubiquitous microphone that seems to pop up everywhere. Uh, this mic has a, a very mid-present sound. I'm not a huge fan of this mic, as if anybody has ever met me. Uh, however, it's good to compare it against because so many people have it. And here we are, back on the trusty Tula mic. So, now it's time to ask future me, hey, future me, what do you think? See? So easy. So I've been editing this for a while and listening back over and over again uh, to kind of rank what I thought. Going by audio quality alone, I still put the Tula at the very top of the heap. To me, it sounds the most realistic. It's a natural sound. It's not pumped in the mids. It's pretty flat. So... Tula still wins top prize. And a close second, though, is the Bumblebee. I think the Bumblebee uh, has very good reproduction uh, for what it is. It's a $100 USB mic, and it sounds pretty good. Now, for third and fourth place, it could go either way. Uh, the AKG seems to have a broader range. Um, I'm getting more lows and highs, and the road is, to me, a little narrower. But this is exclusively for audio quality. That's it. So remember that. And of course, in last place, the Nano. I just don't really like the sound of that mic. Hmm. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope it's been helpful. If you want to watch the review that I did of the Bumblebee 2, I'll stick it right up there. Again, thanks for watching. Until next time.